Hello and welcome back to part three of our Dev Force 2010 Silverlight Tour with me, Ward Bell, your host and VP of Technology at IdeaBlade. Now in part three we're going to do three things. We're going to refine the messages that we're writing to our logs on screen and that's really just an excuse uh, so that we can see what we're doing when we extend the employee class with some custom business logic and with that logic we'll have something more to put in the log. And then finally we're going to use a busy indicator to take control of the screen to kind of lock it out while the entity manager is off fetching and then when the data arrive from the database uh, then we'll relax and let you back into the screen again. Sometimes I want to take the information that's a appearing in the data form about the current employee and I want to use that uh, to write my log message. So I'm going to add a new property to my view model called the current employee and I'm going to bind this uh, to my view so that I can have access to that current employee. And then I'm going to extend this write to log a method that we wrote earlier. And I'm going to extend it to take a query. And, and the point here is that I want to write one kind of log message for one kind of query and another kind of log message for another kind of query. So uh, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll make that decision based on the return type of the query. That is to say what kind of entity is returned. And uh, that means then I'll s set up the message such that if the return type is of type order, then I'm going to say that I'm fetching the orders of a particular employee. And, and that's, I'll say the current employee and some property of it. And that's employee ID is what I've got for now. And if I'm not querying for orders, then I'm querying for something else. And I'll just uh, re report that I'm fetching that kind of type, that return type. Of course, we know that's going to be uh, the only other kind of thing I'm querying for is employees. And then I'll take the message I constructed and delegate it to the original write to log message so that it goes right into the log. Uh, now I can go back to my fetching event and yank uh, the stuff I had there because uh, I'm just going to pass the query through and let that do its thing. Meanwhile, back in the form, I'm going to now take the data form and bind its current item property to our current employee. And then I have to set the mode two-way. And the reason I have to do that is because um, not only will I be interested in um, uh, having the form tell me what the current employee is, that's one way into the view model, but there will come a time when I want to set the current employee and then I'll be writing from the view model back into the view. Uh, one more thing, I want to go back to the view model and, and find our query and I want to comment out the include that we added at the end of the last video because, well there are really two reasons. One is uh, purely for demonstration purposes because as it stands right now with the include I'm only ever going to have two messages in my log uh, because I'm getting the employees, all the employees and all of their orders in one shot. So the only two messages I'm ever going to get are fetching and the fact that it was queried. Uh, and that's no fun. But there's a more substantive reason, which is that someday I'm going to have more than 10 employees. And uh, when I do, it's not going to be possible for me to fetch those employees and all their orders. That's just going to be too much data. And it's going to make a lot more sense for me to only fetch the orders of the employee that I happen to be looking at. And so lazy loading of, a, of the orders will make perfect sense. So we'll compile and run to see if any of this works. Application's coming. All right, we see we're fetching, and then the date arrived. There are nine employees, and we click the forward button, and we see Nancy DeVolio and her 123 orders. And if we click again, we're going to get Andrew Fuller and his 96 orders. But if I click back and go back to Nancy, I don't see any change in the log area, and I wouldn't expect to because uh, she's in cash and her orders are in cash, so we're not actually going anywhere. Uh, but if I click forward again, pass Andrew, and go for Janet, who's ID number three, we should see her 127 orders, and, and that's the kind of thing you would expect 
uh, us to do with lazy loading going forward by taking advantage of cash when we go backward. You know, looking at the log here, I think I'd rather see the employee's full name, you know, first name, space, last name, rather than the ID. Now, I could actually, in the log message, I could construct that first name, space, last name, but I have a feeling that notion of full name is something that I'm going to want throughout the application, and it's really not even UI specific. And because it's not UI specific, it seems like the kind of business logic, simple, but it's still business logic, that belongs inside the employee. The employee ought to have a full name property. That's obviously not generated, so we have to be able to extend the employee in some way, and that's what we're going to do next. In DevForce, we use partial classes to extend business logic of entities. So we'll go to the web project where we defined our entities, where they were generated. We're going to add a class file. I tend to name it the same as the entity, so I'll call this employee. We'll let that happen. And we're going to clean up the usings here. In particular, we have to get rid of uh, system.web because that doesn't exist on the Silverlight side. We'll mark this as a partial class file, and now we will drop in our full name property. Full name, get, first name, plus space, plus last name, put the return in there. One of the things we uh, might want to remember is that if we're binding the full name, it won't update when the first name and last name update. So we may want to uh, raise property changed uh, whenever the first or last name properties change. But that's for another day. And you could go on and add more logic here, um, but we'll just continue on. Uh, we've got it on the web side. Now we need that employee class partial file on the Silverlight side. So we're going to add an existing item. And we go to the web project, and we find that employee.cs. And then the, we drop the combo box down on the Add button and find the Add as link. When we click that, our employee now shows up as a link under shared code right next to the generated code. So when we compile, it'll be there too. And you can see we've got our full name ready to go. Now we go back to the view model uh, so that we can take advantage of what we've just done and replace that employee ID with the full name. And now we're ready to compile and see if this works. The application's coming. We're fetching. We got them. And we'll go up to the nav bar. And there we go, Nancy. As you can see, we're now fetching orders from employee. And we've got the name in place just like we wanted. I'd like to have a strong visual indicator when the DevForce Entity Manager is busy talking to the server as when it's fetching data. And I'd also at the same time like to prevent uh, destructive user input while we're waiting for data to arrive. And for these purposes, uh, there's the Silverlight Busy Indicator. The Busy Indicator is in an assembly that we're not referencing at the moment, so we've got to go find it. And uh, by now, that's getting a little hard. But there it is. It's the System Windows Controls Toolkit. Um, and now that we've got it, we can use it in our XAML. We won't have to have a new namespace because we can reuse the toolkit namespace uh, that we've had earlier, which is that namespace is shared across assemblies. So we've got a busy indicator. And uh, we're going to bind the its is busy property to our is busy view model property. And uh, now, when the spinny thing comes up, we're going to um, we're going to put a text block in it, and we're going to say the word "loading." So that's what's going to appear inside our spinny. Now we got to go back to our view model, and we have to. Uh, this is the first time we've had to use "I notify property changed" because this is the first time we're asking the view model to periodically update the view. Yeah, heretofore, we're either relying on collections to raise events or on the view pushing it into the view model. Now that we're pushing from the view model out to the uh, view, we've got to use I notify property change. So uh, we added a property changed event with a placeholder delegate in it that does nothing. And now we have our own internal little private method for raising property changed. So you give it a string of the name of the property and you'll get the property change behavior. Now we're adding our uh, is busy type. And uh, it has to have a backing field, um, not for the get, obviously, but because when we set the value, then we immediately after setting it, we're going to call our raise property changed, 
with the name of the property, which is, is busy in it. And that's what's going to signal to the view, to the UI, that the busy indicator should uh, engage. Uh, of course, when do we want to do that? Uh, well, when we're fetching, so we go back into our fetching event, we're going to turn that into uh, lambda from one statement into a, uh, a, a multi-statement lambda. And so we'll set busy true when we're fetching, and then when we're done, when we're, uh, we're back, we'll set it uh, to false, so the busy indicator will go dark. So let's see it. See it work? Oh, we've got ourselves an exception here. Uh, we did something wrong. It says that we've got too many um, too many controls inside the user control. Let's go see what we did wrong. Inside the user control, I see that we have the busy indicator and the layout grid. Uh, so we made a mistake. What we need is we need to put the layout grid inside the busy indicator. So we'll pull the tail of the busy indicator down to the bottom. And if we close up the grid, you can see that it's now resting comfortably within the busy indicator. Let's try that again. That's such an easy mistake to make. I do it all the time. All right. Ah, well, we're past that. Here it comes. And we're fetching. There's the loading for the employees. And then as we click through the employees, we're seeing a little loading every time we get the lazily loaded orders. So it's working. That concludes part three of our DevForce Silverlight tour. I hope you'll come back for part four where we do some cleanup. Uh, there are a couple things that I think we really need to fix, uh, the, not the least of which is that when you launch the application, you don't see any data until you click the next button on the nav bar. Uh, we got to get that fixed. So come on back. Uh, I'll be waiting for you.